Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ira. On this channel, I share my life living with Crohn's disease um, to help educate patients and raise awareness for inflammatory bowel disease. I also share about my wellness journey. So if you're into that, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. But we're gonna go ahead and get into today's topic. So today we're talking about C. diff, which is an infection that I struggled with back in 2016. So I'm 27 at the time of this video and I struggled with this infection when I was 21 years old. This actually is kind of like a part two to a video that I made about a year ago, which was how I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch that first because it's gonna tell you a little bit more behind the story that I'm not gonna share here, just to keep it a little bit shorter. Let's go ahead and start with a definition. This one comes from the CDC. C. diff, also known as we're gonna put that on the screen, is a germ bacterium that causes diarrhea and colitis, which is an inflammation of the colon, okay? So just to give a quick stat, it's estimated to cause about half a million infections in the United States each year. I will be sharing a couple more stats throughout this video, um, and I will be leaving links below to the articles and sites that I'm referencing. Right, so first things first, I already mentioned that I have Crohn's disease, but to make a long story short, I had to take an antibiotic, um, and that antibiotic's name was clindamycin. With any antibiotic, there are risks associated with taking antibiotics. Anyone can actually catch an infection from an antibiotic or something like that, but for a generally healthy person, nothing's going to happen. In my case, I contracted C. diff from this antibiotic. so. Here's a little bit about the story. I was at work one day and I had an urgency that I've never experienced before. An urgency to go to the bathroom. Oh, by the way, we're gonna be talking about food and all those things. So if this grosses you out, I'm not really sure why you clicked on a C. diff video, but this is just a warning. So if you're not into that, go ahead and click off. But I experienced an urgency to go to the bathroom that I've never experienced in my life, even till this day, okay? And I have Crohn's disease. So I was like, okay, what did I eat? And I was just like a little confused, but anyhow, it didn't really go away. It came back about an hour later and I had to go home and I went to the urgent care and the urgent care sent me to the hospital cause they're like, we don't know what's going on. It could be your appendix. I was at that point in excruciating pain as well as going to the bathroom, okay? Having diarrhea. So he wanted me to go to the hospital. So I went to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, I was in excruciating pain to the point where every little bump in the road was causing me to like be in pain. I was just like, I was I was going through it at that time, okay? Get to the hospital. By the time we arrive at the hospital, when this first started, I was going to the restroom, I wanna say every hour. By the time we arrived at the hospital, this was probably about five or six hours later, I was going every 15 minutes on the dot, like my colon or something new, it was like a timer, literally every 15 minutes, I promise, I was going to the bathroom, it was crazy. So I was admitted to the hospital. I was in, I was in the hospital for a total of one week. Initially they did a CT scan and they saw that my entire colon was inflamed, which they told me I had pit colitis at that point. So we needed to figure out what was going on. So they did a stool test, which is a poop test. All right, so they had me poop in a little bucket. I mean, the little thing they put on the toilet at the bathroom um, in the hospital. And it's a whole process, guys. You gotta put it in the cup. It was so glad to be done with that right now. But sorry if you have to go through that. But I've gone through it many times. I've had to poop in many a cup, okay? So TMI, but you clicked on this video. So <laughs> I was pooping in the cup. The test came back later and tested positive for C. diff for the infection. So they were wondering how I got this. Do I work in a nursing home? And no, I didn't work in a nursing home. I was working in a daycare at the time, but I didn't get it from the daycare either. So I got it from the antibiotic clindamycin. They immediately treated me with a medication called Flagyl, which is also an antibiotic, but it's used to treat C. diff. So it's not supposed to give you C. diff like some of the other antibiotics potentially can. Just to add this tidbit in here, um, my doctor following my exit at the hospital and all that, eventually 
this this all led to a diagnosis of Crohn's disease. Essentially, me getting C diff and my history of GI issues led to my diagnosis of Crohn's disease. But like a generally healthy 21 year old, you know, why are you catching C diff like from an antibiotic? So there was essentially something underlying was his suspicion and his suspicion was right. Once I got out of the hospital, so like I said, I was in there for a week and from being in excruciating pain, from losing weight and all that. Um, oh, first, let's go through the symptoms, guys. Let's, I'm, I'm going too fast. So we're going to start with what the Mayo Clinic lists as mild to moderate infection. So that would be watery diarrhea three or more times a day for more than one day and mild abdominal cramping and tenderness. So I did not fall into this category at all, okay? I was under the severe category, which would be water, watery diarrhea as often as 10 to 15 times a day. I promise you I was going that much, if not more. Abdominal cramping and pain, which may be severe. It was severe. Rapid heart rate, dehydration, fever, nausea, increased white blood cell count, kidney failure, loss of appetite, swollen abdomen, weight loss, blood or pus in the stool. The only symptom here that I did not experience was kidney failure. Everything else I experienced. And so mine was severe. I was losing weight quickly. I had no appetite. I was barely eating anything. And so it was a really rough time for me. So once I got out of the hospital, um, I had to follow up with a specialist. So I saw a GI doctor and essentially two weeks later, I was sick again. And so here's another stat from the CDC, which says about one in six patients who get C. diff will get it again in the subsequent two to eight weeks. I did not know this. They did not tell me this in the hospital, which, you know, it is what it is. I found out the hard way. So I got it again, and I had to take another round of antibiotics, which was the same antibiotic flagell. So to make a long and drawn out story kind of short, I dealt with this for about eight months. Eight to nine months, I was dealing with C. diff. I was battling this infection, it was rough. I lost a lot of weight. And at this time, I was not diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So towards the end of my battle with it, I was also having a flare up of Crohn's disease and I didn't even know it. So it was like having both at the same time was such a crazy experience, I cannot explain it. Um, I barely had any sort of appetite the entire time on C. diff. I had to make myself eat. And then once I finally got my appetite back, when I finally recovered, I um, was having a Crohn's flare, which caused me to have a ton of canker sores in my mouth. And so I could barely eat um, because I was in so much pain. So it was just a really rough time, guys. But throughout that time, I took a medication called Flagyl multiple times. I took vancomycin multiple times, which is an even stronger antibiotic. You have to take multiple rounds per day. I took that for a, a while. And that one was very strong and it took a toll on me to being on antibiotics for so long. So I was constantly sick. I had bronchitis for like three months. I caught all types of like <laughs> other things just from being like having such a weakened immune system from the antibiotics. It's having to take like probiotics and things like that to help. I was just a really rough time guys. But towards the end, the only thing that finally cleared it up was a medication called Diposid. That medication was the last thing that I took. It was very hard to get approved for it in the first place. Super specialty medication apparently, at least at that time, it was very hard to get your hands on to even get approved. If I didn't get on Diposid, my other option was to get a fecal transplant, which is exactly what it sounds like. Okay? It is exactly what it sounds like. So, I did not have to go down the fecal transplant route. You get a donor, and they go ahead and donate. They do a little procedure, kind of like I want to say like a colonoscopy type. They remove some and they put it in you, kind of thing. And what that is, I believe the goal is to kind of start some good bacteria to grow and kind of like, you know, take over the microbiome. Like you've got a lot of bad stuff with C. diff, kind of just wipes out all the good stuff okay you've got this infection of c diff with all these bad bacteria so the goal is to introduce some good bacteria there right so it can be very helpful and successful for a lot of people i believe i have some other statistics to give you one in 11 people over age 65 diagnosed with the healthcare associated c diff infection unfortunately die within one month okay this is a very serious infection and this is also a stat that is from the national institute of health so as it relates to people with IBD, um, like myself, 
Patients with inflammatory bowel disease are at increased risk of developing C. diff, have worse outcomes of C. diff, including higher rates of colectomy and death, and experience higher rates of recurrence, okay? So colectomy is getting your whole colon removed and experience higher rates of recurrence, which happened in my case. Thank God I was able to recover from this infection. It can be horrible, you know, and I don't know if you know anyone with who's ever dealt with C. diff or you've dealt with it yourself. I am so sorry you had to go through that. I know your pain. And it's also like the way that you're treated after you have C. diff, that stuff matters. After um, I was diagnosed with C. diff in the hospital, they had on PPE, they had on gloves, they could not <gasps> um, come in your room without having full everything on it, okay? And then after that, you're treated differently at the doctor's office, which is fair, it's understandable. They wanna keep other patients safe. But when it was time to get a colonoscopy, I had to be the very last patient of the day. I could not be in the middle, in between patients, or it could be first um, to decrease the risk of spreading to another patient. The way they sterilize the room, the way they prepare themselves to protect themselves is different. So, you know, I felt very like isolated and all that and just trying to, it was like nine months, you know, of having this and trying to live life as well was very, very challenging. I will try to make a follow-up video about just managing the infection if you're going through something like this and it's going on and on and on and you're feeling defeated what you can do to kind of help um like i said i took probiotics for a while um, there's probably some other things i can go back and look back and also show some research of things that can help you while you're while you're being treated for it but if you have an experience with c diff or you know someone who has uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and just share if you have a similar story or questions or recommendations for follow-up videos so but i thank you guys for watching this video and um if you made it this far thank you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and i will see you guys in a future video thanks for watching bye